Good morning. Welcome. And it's a joy to be together as God's people, whether in person here, in the parking lot, or on Zoom, to rejoice in God's blessings and his presence with us. Welcome to any visitors with us today. It is good to have you with us. Any announcements from the congregation? I think there's at least one. So. Can you can you use the mic so our Zoom folks can hear? Thank you. Yes, I'm Mary. Um, I've participated in this program in the past several years, and it's really wonderful. It's called Window Dressers, and whether you it what we do is build um, inserts for windows to make your home more energy efficient. And as everyone knows, the price of fuel is going up, so this is more and more important. So you can either do both. You can get a discount to have the inserts made if you uh, participate in helping build them. And it's kind of fun. It's like a old fashioned uh, factory <laughs> and we everybody has a job to do. It's really nice community building as well. So I'll put these notices out and I'll also um, ask Lillian to put it in the newsletter. Very good. Thank you. Other than that, yep. Unscheduled announcement, but I wanted to thank Linda Kimmelman who got our spring cleanup going. She's already cleaned out the flower bed. So we will be doing spring cleanup during April on Saturday, 9 to noon. Come if you can. Uh, there'll be plenty of work. Don't worry about if we have don't have anything for you to do. So thank you, Linda. And Saturdays in April, we'll be doing spring cleanup. Thank you. Good morning. On the Saturday morning before Easter at 10 a.m., so that's April 16th, the youth and family will be meeting in the kitchen to make Easter breakfast. Um, and the kids will be painting the windows in here so they're kind of like stained glass and dyeing Easter eggs. And if anybody would like to join us to help make breakfast or do any of the other fun things, we would love to have you. Very good. Other announcements? I think the only uh, highlight I want to lift up is our uh, midweek Lenten services continue. We'll be gathering online uh, this Wednesday again at 7 o'clock, and all are welcome for that. We will definitely be singing our hymn after worship outside today. Uh, we celebrate this beautiful day that God has given us. Let's take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship.
Of those who are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward, and you embrace us all with your mercy. By your baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace, and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated.
A reading from Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thank you for coming up today. So, so do you know what an ambassador is? No? Nope. Any ideas? Okay, someone who promotes something, that's right. And a lot of times what we hear is like, Rebecca and I have been watching a lot of Madam Secretary lately. So the, the United States has ambassadors to just about every country in the world, right? And so that ambassador is there to, you're right, promote US interests, but also to help with communication, to see if maybe that country has something they can they can offer to the U.S. or that some way that the U.S. can help that country, right? So in the lesson that we're going to read in just a minute or hear from Paul, a different Paul, St. Paul, says that you and I and all of us here are ambassadors for Christ. So think about that a little bit. So that means, like we just said, that we are here on earth representing Christ and promoting what, Christ, essentially promoting Christ's interests, right? Or God's interests. So that gives us some responsibility, doesn't it? Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, it has to be like, hey, you should come to church with me. Although if we wanna say that, that's certainly fine. But it can even mean simpler things like, you know, if everybody else is picking on somebody, that we don't do that, right? And maybe we even help them out or defend them a little. Or, you know, we're ready to, to really kind of get angry, maybe even at our sister or a friend or something. But instead of getting angry, we say, oh, wait, I'm an ambassador for Christ. So I'm not going to, I'm going to, Maybe I'll still get angry, but I won't take it out on them. Right? Because doing, whenever we do things like that, we are showing that that's, what, that's how Christ is, and that's how Christ wants us to live. All right? So we are ambassadors for Christ in the world. I think that's pretty cool. Thanks for coming up. A reading from 2 Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, 
In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us together speak the Alleluia or the Gospel Acclamation. I will arise and go to my Father and say, I have sinned to him before you. Our Gospel reading for this fourth Sunday in Lent is from the 15th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, o God. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property and dissolute living. When he had spent everything a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. A ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. And he became angry and refused to go in. 
His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you. And I have never disobeyed your command. You have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. May God's grace and guidance be with us during this Lenten season, as together we seek to grow in faith and in our calling as God's children. So a question, how many of you are familiar with C.S. Lewis's book, The Screwtape Letters? All right, quite a number. If not, I am glad to suggest it to you on our Lenten journey. Dedicated to another of my favorite authors, J.R.R. Tolkien, it is a series of letters from a kind of mentor demon named Screwtape to his nephew, Wormwood. No, let no demons to share with you today, but a few letters. October 1. Dear Benjamin, big news, I was purchased a couple of days ago by a, a rancher. It looks like there will be little inside work in my future. Although once they find out I can read and write, I may end up doing some office work. I don't know anything more than that right now, but wanted to let you know. Hope all is well with you. Signed, Philippus. November, November 5th. Dear Benjamin, well, I am now in my new home. It turns out I am the servant of the son of the rancher. A rather important position, truly. I don't know how he got along without me. I am always having to keep him straight. I'll tell you, it's a big outfit. The rancher himself is no spring chicken anymore, but I bet in his day, he was a pretty tough character. Just looking at the land around here, I wouldn't say you could get anything to live, much less grow. But he's got herds of cattle everywhere. There are a lot of people here. It will take me a long time to learn them all. Signed, Philippus. April 21. Dear Benjamin, remember how I was telling you what a tough character the rancher is? Well, I couldn't believe it, but we worked so hard through the last couple months, I didn't even have time to write a letter to you. You would have expected that we would have had some time off for winter or at least the spring celebration, but no. When we weren't working, repairing fences and feeding cattle, we were inside doing other work. Since I last wrote you, I found out that my master is not the only son. There is a, a younger son as well. I'm not sure that the two get along very well. Still, the rancher seems to care for both his sons a lot. I'll have to talk to some of the other servants and find out more 
of the scoop on them. Signed, Philippus. Dear Benjamin, big news. What a shakeup this week. That younger son I was telling you about, well, I know you're hardly going to believe this, but he's gone. He left last week, apparently to go find himself or see the world or something. To leave the family ranch like that by itself is shocking, but that isn't the biggest news. I understand that before he left, he asked the rancher for a lot of money. I mean a lot. Just went right up to him and demanded it, something about how he was going to get it anyway when the old man died, but he wanted it now. Well, as tough as that old man is, I'm surprised he didn't take the kid out on the spot. But I hear he gave it to him, the money, that is. I can't believe it myself, but when the kid left, he sure did go in style. One of the other slaves said he is off to Bangor, Maine, or some such place, wherever that is. Well, in any case, my master now has twice as much work as before, and I thought things were bad then. Speaking of which, I better get back to it. Signed, Philippus. July 20. Dear Benjamin, just a, a short note this time. The, the ranch is still holding together, but it does seem like the old man must have given that kid a lot of money. Nothing but cutbacks here lately. Everything seems to be in short supply, including tempers. Haven't heard a word about the younger son. Well, that is nothing about where he is or what he's doing, but I'll tell you, I've been hearing plenty about him from the older son. Such language. Hard to believe they're brothers. Signed, Philippus. October 14. Dear Philippus. Yes, I know. Don't faint just because I'm actually writing you a letter. I had to let you know, though. I heard some news about your master's younger brother. He's working at the Souder Station Farm, raising pigs. Wow, what a place to work. What I heard was that he was the new guy on the waste management crew. Do you know how much waste pigs produce? And how do you possibly manage that? And to be the low man on that totem pole? Well, it's scary to think about. So much for his great plans of seeing the world. Had to let you know. Signed, Benjamin. February 10th, well, dear Benjamin, well, it was certainly amazing to hear your news, almost as amazing as getting a letter from you. Yeah, so much for Mr. High and Mighty. From what he said to the people around here before he left, he was going to rule the world. He kept talking as about how he was going to take his money, his money, mind you, like he hadn't been given all of that and more, and turn it into a serious fortune. He was going to have so much power and so many people answering his every command. Ha! Low man on the totem pole, on a crew taking care of pig waste. 
Hmm. I'm living better than he is now, and, and I'm a servant. Signed, Philippus. February 14, dear Benjamin, big news. Yes, I know it's just been a few days since I last wrote, but I had to let you know he's back. The younger son, talk about the lost being found. My goodness, what a goings on. Apparently, the kid finally decided that he had had enough of living like an animal and wanted back into the good life. Well, it was a good thing the old man saw him first. I've got to believe that if any of the other ranch hands had seen him, they'd have done for him good. Certainly, if the older brother had seen him first, well... I doubt he would have walked off the ranch again, if you know what I mean. But that really isn't the most amazing part. I guess the old man must have seen him coming up the road pretty early in the morning, wasn't even out of his pajamas. But there he went, flying right out the front door, pajamas and all. I'll tell you, they had to be a gift from one of his nephews or nieces. No sane man would have ever bought something which looked like that. He flew out the front door looking like a maniac. He missed his footing as he came off the steps and went flying into the dirt. And, well, some of that stuff you have if you have cows everywhere. Half the crew was out and watching by this point. You, you would have thought the old man would have kept a little more dignity, but not that morning. What a sight. I'll never forget it, I can tell you. It certainly must have been Valentine's Day, because when all that boy deserved was a kick in his rear and to be thrown back to the pigs, what he got was his father hugging him and laughing and kissing him and calling to everybody in sight. He had thought the boy had done something great instead of half destroying the ranch. And wow, from the way the old man was acting, you'd have thought this was the best day of his life. Signed, Philippus. March 10, dear Benjamin, have you received your invitation yet? If not, you must be the only one in the country who hasn't. You wouldn't believe the party the old man is planning to celebrate his son's return. Beer, liquor, tons of food, of course, you name it. There was going to be a pig roast, but, well, that got scratched off the list pretty quickly. I don't know, I didn't know the old man knew so many people, but the invitations have been going out by the truckload. My master now. That's another story. I don't know if he's going to be at the party or not. The father has talked to him several times, begged him, pleaded with him to come to the party or even at this point to just join the family again. But wow, I have never seen my master this angry. And for so long, he just won't let it go. You should have heard the shouting that went on the other day. The old man telling his son how much he meant to him. But the son wasn't having any of it. He started yelling about how hard he had always worked on the ranch, how committed he was to it, but no matter how hard he tried, the old man never seemed to give him any credit. 
My master even started shouting about how he had been treated like a slave and pointed at me when he was saying that. Hmm. I much prefer being called a servant. In any case, it's certainly not true. It's obvious to everyone, well, everyone else anyway, how much the old man loves all his children. Anyway, the big party is on. I've never seen the old man so happy, at least until he starts talking to my master again. I wonder what will happen. I mean, my master does have a point. In some ways, the kid did do some really stupid things. But then my master is no model of wisdom or obedience himself. And to deliberately cut yourself off from happiness to hold on to such anger and hurt, to lose sight of all the good things you do have because everything didn't go exactly your way? Well, what would you do? Is forgiveness and reconciliation with others even a possibility for you? Would you welcome a sinner and eat with him? Signed, Philippus. Amen.
For those who are able, please rise. Living together in trust and hope, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not me, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, you make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God. <laughs> Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, God of all nations, we lift before you the people of the Ukraine. We ask your power at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both those under assault and those being forced into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations that wisdom and compassion may reign. Merciful God, your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. We lift up before you particular situations or people aloud, silently, or by chat.
Merciful God, your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, the one who is dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I share a sign of God's peace with one another with horns in our parking lot and chat on Zoom. God's peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace, Steve. Peace, peace. Peace. Peace, Eric. Peace, peace Eric. Peace, Susie and Nils. <laughs> Peace, Art and Lee. Peace, everybody. We continue with the offering.
extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here, come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled.
in the parking lot and on Zoom receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen. Receive the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. Receive the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Again, following our dismissal, we will be gathering outside for the hymn on the back of your bulletin. I believe we also have coffee available. I think, maybe, yes. Anyway, welcome to gather in the fellowship hall. And I know we have a uh, bell choir rehearsal in the few minutes as well. Receive the blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, Jesus meets you on the way.